Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Bedtime Stories. I'm Jamila and I will be reading with you today. So remember what I said last time, 10 minutes before bed is good for you. It helps you to relax and you gain knowledge. So the book I've chosen for us today is called My Tawheed Book. Now you might be thinking, hmm, what story is that? My Tawheed book. Well, it's an Islamic story and I'm going to tell you exactly what it means. So get ready. What is Tawheed? Tawheed means to single out Allah as the one and only one to worship. So when I say Tawheed, the meaning of it means to only believe in one Allah. And that's it. You don't Mix anything else with him. The only one and true God in our belief and in our worship, in our everyday life, what we do. There are three, one, two, three, three important things you need to understand about practicing Tawheed. So the first one is Ar Rububiyya. Can you repeat it after me? Ar Rububiyya. It means to believe that Allah is alone, which is we worship him alone by himself. We don't mix anybody else with him. He is the only Lord, the Rub, the master of all that's in the heavens and all that's in the earth belongs to Allah. He created everything. He has no partners. He is the only creator. He makes us, he makes the plants, he makes the animals, he's made everything. He is the owner and he is the provider, so he provides for us, he gives us things. He is a sustainer and all of his creations and all the life in this world and the hereafter all belong to Allah. That means our rububiya. Did you understand that? Very good. He, Allah, God, he has planned everything around us and he gave us peace. Peace and be calm and relax. He gave us security, he gave us success in this life and our next life, which is the real life. Allah is with us by his knowledge. He hears us, he sees us through what we do, and he sees us and knows everything that we do. So when you be naughty, Allah can see you, and when you be good, Allah can see you too. So be good. He hears everything you say. So even if you have a secret thought or you think something in your head, Allah knows what you're thinking. He knows everything that's happening around you. Everything, all his creations, even the animals, he knows what they're thinking too. It is Allah who gives us life and life after we die. He will bring us all back to life. He is the one. When he says be, everything will be. To believe that no one has the right to be worshipped that's also Tawheed. Tawheed, to believe that no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Allah acts alone. He does not need help from anyone. He is the most powerful. He is the king. All our acts of worship must only be for Allah. So when we do things, we think of Allah when we do it. When we do something for another person, we do it for the sake of Allah because then you get lots of reward. Allah is self-sufficient, which means he doesn't need any help from anyone. He does not need us, but we all need him. All our prayers, our charity, our fasting and all the good things that we do for people will all be rewarded by Allah. So it's like if you be good and your mum or your dad might give you a sweet 
that Allah will give us lots of rewards if we do good things. We worship Allah alone and we join no partners with him. Then that is a committed believer. But if you join partners with Allah, that's called shirk. So Allah alone is to be worshipped. Tawheed al-asma wa as-sifat. That's the third step of Tawheed, is to believe in Allah and his beautiful names. Allah has so many names. And it's really good if you can remember them because they're all attributes of Allah. So the names of Allah tells you what he does and who he is. The beautiful names of Allah and attributes of Allah as mentioned in the Holy Quran and as described by his messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do you remember the story you read about Prophet Muhammad? Yes. So he is the last messenger of Allah who also describes about Allah, Allah's names and his attributes. So all the things he does for us are not comparable to his creations, which is what Allah does is nothing the same as what we can do because Allah is most powerful. For example, the attributes of hearing, seeing, are all attributes that we mankind have. But they are limited. All the things that we do are limited. Yet Allah's hearing, Allah's seeing are perfect because Allah can hear us and he can see us. He can even see us now reading, which is really good because reading is good for you. So the more one knows about Allah and his attributes, the more one will love Allah, fear Allah and have hope in Allah. The story of Prophet Abraham and the idols are also mentioned in this book of Tawheed. This is a story of the Prophet whose father used to make idols out of wood. However, the Prophet Abraham was different. Now we're going to discuss why he's different so you understand why he was different because he believed in Allah. It's so important that you believe in Allah. Allah is the one and true God and Allah guided him to the straight path when he was very young. He was a very young man and he had a father who did not believe so it was very difficult for him. He used to ask his father, Oh father, why do you worship idols? But his father said, This is what I do and this is what I will worship. The idols did not benefit him in any way. His father replied, We found our grandfathers worshipping idols, so we worship them too. Then Abraham said, Certainly, you and your fathers are clearly in the wrong. They replied, Are you telling us the truth? Or are you the one who plays around? He said, Your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the one who created you. One day the idol worshippers invited Ibrahim to join them in their celebrations, but the prophet politely but very kindly refused and stayed back. He didn't want to be rude to them, so he told them very politely he wouldn't be able to attend. When all the people had left for the celebrations, he went to the idols and he broke them into lots of pieces. Smash, 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 smash. He smashed them up except the biggest one. Then he hung an axe on its neck. When the people returned from their celebrations, they found all their idols were destroyed except one big one. They immediately suspected the prophet. They asked, did you do this? Did you break our gods? Ibrahim? Ibrahim replied, 
it was the biggest one that did it. So ask him about it. It was your biggest idol that did it. They were now very confused and very angry. Who could have broken all the idols? And why are they all smashed up? As they did not know, they were still angry. They knew that the idol could not talk, nor could it defend itself. Abraham said, Why do you worship the idols instead of Allah? Why do you worship the statues? Shame on you. The idols could neither help you, and they can't even hear you. They said, let's destroy him and build our gods again. So they wanted to do something bad to Prophet Abraham. Allah the Most Merciful protected him by ordering the fire to be cool and peaceful. So all the non-believers tried to start, start a fire, but Allah calmed the fire down and said, calm down to the fire, and the fire calmed down. And that saved the Prophet. Verily, in this indeed are signs for those who believe in Allah alone. So again, we know from this, because the Prophet, he believed in Allah, they couldn't hurt him with the fire. Allah saved him. Surah al-Ikhlas, it means sincerity. That's also part of the Tawheed. Sincerity, sincerely believing something. The title of the Surah Ikhlas means sincerity. Sincerity in our belief can only be in our hearts. We have to correct understanding of Allah. Al-Khalik, the creator, the prophet, peace be upon him, describes this Surah as being equal to one third of the Quran. This surah reminds us of the importance of our belief in the oneness of Allah and that there is no one equal to him or like him. Allah is the creator and he controls everything and there's nothing like him. So, my children, what is the benefit of Tawheed? Tawheed teaches us everything about our Lord our Creator, the one who made me, who made you, and everyone around us. Allah and the purpose of our life. Life on this earth and the life after this earth. It teaches us to worship Allah alone, that is, Tawheed, without joining partners with Him, because we can't join partners with Him. That's wrong. He alone. He is self-made. No one created Him. Allah has no parents. We all need to know that Allah is the Almighty, He is the All Strong. By His beautiful names and attributes, those who have firm understanding of Tawheed will understand in their hearts and they will listen and they will think. And His Messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will be rewarded with paradise. Paradise is heaven and be saved the punishment of the hellfire. Nobody wants to be punished in the hellfire, so we should all do good things, so we go to paradise, which is heaven. The creation of you all and the resurrection of you all are only of a single person. Verily, Allah is all hearer and the all seer. And that's in Al Quran 31, verse 31. The book of Tawheed today we've learnt is understanding the oneness of Allah and believing in Allah. That's what Tawheed is. So, my children, have Tawheed. Believe there is only one Allah, one God, one Creator. He is the Almighty, and in anything, any situation you're in, just ask Allah, ask God for help in whatever you do. So we understand that Tawheed is part of our life of understanding and believing in Allah. Thank you so much for joining me again today.
And inshallah, I will see you again soon. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum.